Hey y'all, it's Mikey and Rachel from Rockin' K. And if you're wondering what you stumbled into, is you stumbled all the way into Germany. Yes, Germany. We are a couple doing the like all, like homesteading DIY thing here in Germany. Uh, and in this installment, we're gonna get stuff out of the garden. We're going to shuck some corn. We're gonna get some firewood done. We're gonna get a whole bunch of different things. And yeah, so stay tuned. All right, y'all, so last last week you saw us, you know, working in the garden a little bit and stuff like that. And uh, this week we got that little corn cob cleaner thing. Uh, so you'll see her uh, doing some of that and making the, the corn kernels, you know, the kernel cord. Yeah. Putting it in, the, in the, the bags to throw in the freezer. And I had to, I absolutely had to knock out some firewood. Yeah. So it's you, not getting done on yeah, its own. You saw this fire would get delivered months ago and yeah. So with that I we had to I had to get out there and so earlier in the week I was out there and I cut up some of the logs into the one meter lengths. And then yesterday I spent pretty much half the day doing nothing but splitting and bundling that wood up into bundles. And putting it on the stack so you'll see some of that um, but what we want, want what we want you to do is to click that like and that subscribe button and hit the notification bell and it'll let you know when we get some new content up and mind you our content is a mixed content yeah it is everything from gardening and working on the vehicles and doing all the stuff that the renovation that you know you're gonna have to do if you're you're out here and you're kind of trying to do it on your own to include growing food uh solar which you know we put these solar panels up above us this nice little shade we got all kinds of stuff but please do click that like and subscribe it will help us grow the channel it'll help us get bigger and better content so currently we're sitting at uh, 353 subscribers Thank you to each and every one of you. We really appreciate it. We love every each one of you. For those of you that haven't subscribed, please, please, please consider subscribing. It's free. Yep, and enough on, on uh, beating that subscription drum. But, so, like we said, you're going to see some, uh, some harvest time. You're going to see some firewood time. You're going to see some tractor time. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a little bit of a mixed bag this week. Kind of similar to what it was last week. Last week we showed you uh, pulling some corn out and stuff like that. And uh, she grabbed tomatoes. And the onions. And the onions and stuff like that all last no, week. No, we did check the carrots today. I think I'll give them another week in the ground yeah. and I'll pull them. She did pull the carrot and we ended up eating the carrot. Yeah, the carrot didn't even make it. Uh, ten feet. To ten feet. It, it was out of the ground. She washed it off with a garden hose and we ate it and it was delicious so she is going to look at doing them in the raised beds in yep. the greenhouse right here so she has the the couple of plastic raised beds that she bought from the local building supply um to do her onions in and stuff like that uh earlier in the year so now that she's got this nice greenhouse and we have uh that means winter crop more of a temperate weather right now you know it's not so hot she can do some some uh some vegetable gardening inside yep. and with the the carrots 
it's a no-brainer. We love, we absolutely love carrots. Yeah. So if she does one of her planters in carrots now and then waits like four or five weeks, maybe a, you know, a month, maybe two, and plants the other one with, with um, carrots, then she'll be able to round up, you know, harvest what we have in the actual outside garden in the next couple of weeks, then fast forward, you know, uh, a, you know, probably a month and a half, two months, she'll be able to harvest the, you know, the next one and the next, so on and so forth, just so we have that steady supply of carrots because we love carrots and we'll probably we could just sit around eating carrots a lot, you know, between carrots and lettuce and beans and, you know, we'll we'll eat all those nice, you know, fresh vegetables, and yeah, it's good stuff. But anyway. So we're going to stop babbling and we're going to get you off and to seeing what we got up to this week. Yep. So um, today I need to harvest the corn. My corn cob remover came in the mail. Um, I also have to get some raspberries. I'll probably make some jelly. And then now I've got to harvest some tomatoes. Um, I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with those. I might freeze them and add them to my sauce later, but we'll see. So that's what you're going to see is me collecting my corn up, getting ready to shuck it, and getting all the rest of the goods out of the garden. Okay, so I don't know how much juice I'll get, but I have more fruit on the plants that has to ripen. And hopefully, if I juice this out and then come out again, I'll get at least a cup, and that's at least one jar of jelly that I have for the year. Because Mike doesn't eat the jelly. All right, y'all. So apparently, the little corn cob machine little thing showed up today to remove the kernels from the corn. So we're trying to sneak up here on Rachel. She's back here in the garden. Uh, I think she's grabbing all the corn because I think her plan is to strip it all and get us some corn into the freezer. So yep, she's she's been here. And sorry for the wind, it is a little windy. But she pulled a bunch of corn and some of the tomatoes. And I believe she's going to go inside and pull, you know, get the kernels off. Well, she's out here with her phone, too, doing some videoing. Because it looks like she's pulling grapes. Oh, raspberries. raspberries, raspberries. So you'll see some of that footage from the, from the phone. Uh, I'll incorporate that all into this. <clears throat> and, yeah, it's, it's windy out here. So hopefully... The sound isn't uh, screwed up for you guys. 
but she was out here with Penny Dog. Yeah. So it looks like she got maybe, a, I don't know, 10 ears, 12 ears of corn. She got some popcorn ears. Ugly tomatoes is ready. So. Yep. And a whole lot of raspberries. That's a lot of raspberries. Hopefully it's enough to juice it and get at least one small jar of jelly. Like I said, I he don't eat jelly, I eat jelly. And raspberry jelly is one of my favorites. So hopefully I have enough juice. We will see. She doesn't have her phone recording now. But you can see it's an overcast grayish day. And it's really, it's actually mild. It's only like 20-ish degrees. Uh, Celsius, that is. Um, but yeah. And wow. Let me flip you around. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. But if you look on this tree, yeah, the there is pears all over this tree. <clears throat> so it looks like we're going to get a, a bunch of pears off that tree. And then, of course, the one down behind it is... Uh, Apple. <clears throat> the apples are full too. That's an apple over there. That's an apple over there. There's an apple down just past here. You can see the other tree trunk. And another apple over there. All the apples are full. So it looks like we'll have a good apple harvest. And the problem with these apples is they're on the bitter. It, it, they're a weird, like, they're, they're not really good for eating. They're, for they're great for making. Apple, cider. apple cider wine, uh, however you want to call it, hard cider. Uh, basically, you juice it and you take that juice and you ferment it into what they call veets here. And yeah, it's good stuff. So it looks like we might be doing veets this year. Yeah. Uh, because we, we skipped it last year because of the apples. cycle of the weather, it really stunted and we didn't get much uh, apples off the trees. But I think this year, no, uh, that there's, there's going to be enough to do some, some uh, feats. And yeah, that's good stuff. We'll bring you along for that, that, that adventure, definitely. But I think she wants to head up to the house. And she's probably wants me to carry the vegetables. Yes, I do. So. Well, he has a choice. He can carry the tripod and my phone, and I'll carry my fruit and vegetables. Either way, I'm going to have to turn you guys off and uh, carry this stuff up to the house. So we'll catch up with you. All right, so we're back. We're up here in the, in the carport. So I'll turn so the lighting is much better. But... She's gonna work here in the, here at this in table in the breezeway and take all the corn and she's gonna shuck it. After shucking it, she's gonna cut the kernels off of the cool. sweet corn and then the popcorn uh, ears, I guess she has to leave the kernels on the cob until they dry and kind of like they brush off kind of like sunflower seeds do when sunflower seeds dry. Uh, something like that, I think. Yep. At least that's my best guess. Yep. But, so, she's got her camera set up. And so, we're going to go into a time lapse for hers while, she, you know, on the other camera while she does all this corn. And I'm going to go see what I could get into.
All right, y'all, so we are inside, and she is done. You watched her strip some of the corn on one camera to then strip more of the corn on another camera to then here we are on the on the GoPro and she's getting ready to bag up the corn that she has removed from the cob so that we can kind of use it uh, she can freeze it and then we can take it out put it in bowls like I said earlier and you know with butter and yeah make make good fresh corn so let me flip you around that's what she ended up with look at all that corn so now she's going to put the corn into ziploc baggies so that she can freeze it and then um we can have corn whenever we want so win-win really has sugar content it uh it was very sticky. Yeah, she's saying when she was shocking it or removing it from the cob that it actually has like a high sugar content because you could feel it like the it getting sticky from the sugars. So let me flip you around quick. So her plan is to divide it up and it looks like four equal parts because it is a lot of corn. So she's going to start out, it looks like a cup in each. Yeah, three quarters. Or three quarters of a cup in each. But look at that. That's two, two meals. Going on three. Supervisor. Now she's working on number four. I know y'all can count. I'm just counting out loud for myself. And of course, the cat has to be overlord and watch everything go on. So now she's going to try to just divvy up that last little bit into each one of them. So it looks like it's about a cup of corn kernels each-ish. Which, you know, you when you're making it bags. as a side to go with, you know... Mashed potatoes and meat. Mashed potatoes, meat, um... You know, your, your main and, and two sides, that's more than enough corn for... Not that Mike has not been known to eat just corn for dinner. Two people. Hey, I have eaten just corn. And that's where those steamer bags come in. They're delicious. You can buy a steamer bag, you throw it in the microwave, zap it up, throw some butter on it, touch of salt, and you can just eat it. And corn is good. It's, it's, it's a good fiber and, you know, it. so... Uh, yeah, I've been known to eat just corn. He's also been known to eat just mashed potatoes. Again, is there anything wrong with eating just mashed potatoes? Come on. Smash taters are great. And again, it's like a vegetable. It's a starch, but it's still tasty. So... There's one bag of corn. She's going to put it over here. She's going to flatten it out some so that she can just stack them up in the freezer. And she's not going to she's not going to um, mark the dates on these yeah. because come, come harvest it's our only year. harvest. So yeah, and come harvest next year, what's left will be pulled out. And if there's not going to be any left, I know that. That's two. Three. And four. Four bags of corn. So, so that's gonna go to the freezer. And now we have four meals worth of corn. We are talking about, I mean, this was our first. So don't get me wrong. We've grown corn in the past, 
but this was our first time growing. We did four rows of corn. Uh, we, we did a little more. It, we did a little more than we used than we've done in the past. And we always put it whole on the corn kernel or the cob. In and the we we always freeze it. Like she, I don't know if you heard her. She's off camera. She was saying that we always freeze the the corn on the cob and cook the cobs like wrapped in tin foil on the barbecue and stuff like that. So we were looking for something a little more convenient and actually something with a little more you know that you can just throw in a bowl, microwave it up. And you got you got your your side dish. So what I was getting to earlier is we might do something crazy and plant a lot of corn next year. And I mean a lot. Like maybe ten times what we just did. So we'll see. Um the good thing is um she can also do the sweet corn but she can also do the feed corn so maybe just maybe we'll do two rotations of corn next year we'll do one rotation of the sweet corn and one rotation of feed corn and like i said probably like 10 times as much if not, I, I mean, I don't want to go crazy overboard. Um, well, we share too. We always share our garden. And the thing is, if we do end up with a lot of corn, and what I mean by a lot, I mean like a ton of corn, we can share it with the neighbors and stuff like that. And yeah. Or she could even um, like farm stand it, you know, kind of sell it off to... Whoever, you know, on the cob. She'll only prepare our our corn that we're going to eat. And I think for the most part, we're going to do like 20-ish percent will be left on the cob. And the other 80 percent she'll do like she just did. And we'll put it into freezer bags and freeze it so that we can cook it very easily without having to... Um, like boil the cob in a pot or wrap it in foil and put it in the oven or in the barbecue. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's rough because the modern convenience of the microwave, right? And yeah, I but mean, there should be no difference. It's, it, I eat the steamer corn all the time. And like she said, I'll even sit down and eat a bowl of just steamer corn and, yeah, now we have our own corn. Well, it's not steamer corn. I'm going to put it in a Pyrex bowl and microwave it. It's pretty close, right? So we're going to get uh, off and on to other things. What? I don't know. Uh, it's still kind of early. And yeah, we will see. What is up, y'all? So last installment, we were talking about uh, Rachel going to pressure wash the uh the wall here for the inside of the greenhouse because that's the first place we're gonna paint so she decided today was the day and she's going to get the pressure washer all set up and her plans are to gently pressure wash the wall so that you can get so that you can get any of the really loose stuff off but not blast all the plaster that's on top of the concrete block off the wall that's why i say gently so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set you up on another camera on a tripod where you can watch her hopefully not unleash destruction on this wall so y'all sit tight and watch her go to work
All right, y'all, while Rachel's down there doing that pressure washing, I'm going to have to get on the tractor and get around and get some firewood uh, processed. So off we go for that. So I got, what was it, five five more bundles of wood put on the stacks. And yeah, I'm going to put up some drone footage now and show you what the stacks look like and how much wood I got left. And then we're going to go over to the back and see how Rachel did with the pressure washing. Okay, so the wall is now free from the mold. Now it's gonna have to dry. We'll give it a week or two. I've still gotta go get the paint, we gotta order it. And then while I was here, I went ahead and pressure washed the mold off of the floor. So I'm pretty happy with it. I think it turned out good. That uh, the mold here, it just sinks right into the pores of the stucco. But it's drying pretty good already, so I think it'll be all right. All right, y'all, so it's been a busy, bed up, but a productive week. Um, varied week. Yeah. A lot of different varied. things. The, uh, the hay is pretty much ready behind me. It's all dried, ready for uh, going to, to feed some livestock. And way back there, if you can see, there's... And the onions are on the pallet way back there by the doors. So, yeah, we've got the onions harvested last week. You saw that. The corn this the week. The corn this week. I did the raspberries and got three small jars yeah, of jelly. Yeah, she did jelly, raspberry jelly. It's really good. Uh, this, this weekend as well. Yeah, um, yeah it's, been, it's been crazy great. And I made Mike his, his, his uh, cornbread cake. Well, she made corn, skillet cornbread, basically. So... Uh, good stuff. I love cornbread. Um, but we're going to get out of here. We're going to get this uh, 
all compiled and edited and all that. I got like, I don't know how many different clips, but three different cameras, three different cameras. <laughs> yeah. Craziness, craziness, craziness. But you know, I like to do it for you guys. Um, well, we divide and conquer, so we have to take multiple cameras. Yep. So like we said earlier, if you haven't, please click that like, please click that subscribe. Big we, thumbs up, please. We love each and every one of you. And please, if you got any questions or anything, put it in that comment. Yep. We'd love to hear from you. So you know my motto. If you're thinking about family, you're thinking about friends, give them the WhatsApp or the WhatsApp. You know you'd love to hear from them too. And until the next installment, off you to Zane. Cheers.